Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for joining us. Whether you're listening over the air live on 96.5 FM, The Answer, out of the Little Rock, Central Arkansas area, or if you're listening live online via the stream at 96.5 FM, The Answer.com, or if you're listening delayed by podcast or on Krypton Radio, I'm just glad you're here. Uh, we always have fun. This is Geek Talk Radio, just like political talk radio or religious talk radio or Hey My Car is Broken talk radio, but it's Geek Talk Radio, so we have fun every week. This is live talk radio, and one of the reasons I do live talk radio is so that people can participate if they want and send in questions or comments. You can always call in at 501-823-0965, that's 501-823-0965, or you could tweet me at Shane Plays. that's S H A N E. P-L-A-Y-S. I had a, a listener and a friend send me a uh, an email last week during the show. I didn't see that. I can't monitor everything. So if you if you really, really want to uh, get a hold of me, uh, tweet me at Shane Plays Yo, or not Yo, um, uh, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. As always, given out my personal email address there, Shane Plays. You can also go to uh, the live blog, or not the blog, but not the live blog, the blog, at shameplays.com. Sounds like a horror movie, Bill. The blog. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's the voice of Bill yes. Brackeen, friend of the show, frequent frequent friend of the show. We're glad to have him back after a bit of a hiatus because he's been busy with real life. Um, and we've also got on the line, I'll introduce here in a moment, is Carl Kiesel, who is a comic book professional veteran. Um, and we'll talk about some of his work in a cool Kickstarter he has going right now. And I'll introduce him just in a moment, you can go to shameplays.com, S H A N E P L A Y S dot com, and there's show notes for the show up right now. So for the news items and for the guest, Carl Kiesel, uh, there's information about him, uh, our news items, and then also, of course, a link to his Kickstarter. So you can check that out. And Bill, I think you said you've already you've already backed the Kickstarter, right? Yes, I have backed the Kickstarter for uh, Section Zero, which is hard to do because it doesn't exist. There is no yeah. Section if, Zero. If 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 there were, there isn't, but if there were a Kickstarter for Section Zero, then Carl will tell us about what it would look like if it existed, which yes. it doesn't. Yes. It doesn't exist, but he'll tell us about what it would be like if it did. So don't forget, last week's show is uh, archived on the blog. It's also gone out as a podcast on you know iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and more. And we um, are also carried a week delayed on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your wi-fi kryptonradio.com and we had um the founder and head head dude from krypton radio on the show with us last week when we talked about doctor who um i think that was last week was that last week we talked about doctor who let me check i'm pretty sure it was two weeks ago what we talked about last week zach come on now how am i messing this up i know what we talked about we talked about wonder woman psychology with a superheroologist dr travis langley which was cool. So uh, you can check both of those out on the blog or on the podcast. Now, uh, gonna go ahead and move on. Carl, are you on the are you on the uh, line with us, there, buddy? Here, I'm here. Thing. Hey, there's Carl Kiesel. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you, Carl. All these years, I thought it was Kessel. Uh, I thought we were gonna be doing the Kessel Run today, and Bill corrected me that it's Kiesel. Like. Yeah. Well, yeah, in the way I remember that, you're an inker, so you're an artist that has an easel, and that's my memory trick for remembering that. I like that. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that. That's you, good. You're going to steal that? Welcome to the show. Uh, so glad to have you. I've, you know, I was looking through your bibliography. I've, I've read and owned a lot of your work over the years, all the way back to when you were on Suicide Squad. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased to have you on the show Looking forward to talking to you about your work and the Kickstarter that doesn't exist for Section Zero. So, oh, thank you. yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, Carl has apprised us that he is on his cell phone at a remote secret location and real life may or may not intrude. So, deep in a bunker. Somewhere. Yeah, he's deep in a bunker. So, uh, Bill is super familiar with Section Zero that doesn't exist. So, if for some reason 
you have to run Carl. You'll still be in good hands and, and Bill will carry your standard. So, um, we've got, uh, I'm going to throw out a couple of quick announcements. We'll do a quick news section or a new segment, and then we'll talk about, uh, your work, Carl, and 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 Section Zero, which doesn't exist. We have to we have to keep reinforcing. There that. is no section there is no zero. Section Zero. So um, anyway, okay. I know that Bill and Carl know that what is today free comic book. It's day. it's free comic book day, and I believe there's a special reward on the Kickstarter that doesn't exist if people mm-hmm. back today. Uh, okay. And yeah, we'll talk about that more here in a second. Um, but yeah, just want to let people know it is free comic book day. I heard Fox News was on right before the show, and they were they were talking about free comic book day. This has become a really big event. Uh, sh- uh, show sponsor Collector's Edition, the comic book store, of course, has a free comic book day event going on today. You can go to Collector's Edition on JFK and North Little Rock, or you can go to. And I think Bill went. I went. She, Sheila and I, the lovely Sheila's in the studio. She doesn't want to say hi, but she's still lovely. Um, we went to Collector's Edition on JFK. Bill, you and your family went to comic book store on Treasure Hill Road, right? Yes. And both were busy. Yes. Yeah, very busy. Uh, and you can go by from 10 to 5 today. It, it's only 1 o'clock now. You still got four hours. That's one of the advantages of listening to the show live, not by podcast. And there's free comics on a first-come, first-served basis. And uh, you can also get 25% off of back issues and graphic novels. So swing by. And, you know, you, I'll, go check out your other you know your local comic book stores there's a lot of events going on i let my little boy dive into the 50 cent men yep. and he came up with a great big pile of stuff right and uh and i, I you know we've got uh old issues of blue beetle and things i love like and the 80s blue beetle yeah big so fan it, of ted cord blue beetle he, he he's all into batman and stuff like that yep. so he he got a bunch of those and we got some wonder woman for his sister and and things like that so he we we came out with a big pile of stuff and we didn't pay that much money for it. So. That, yeah, it's 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 a fun day. I, there's a lot of events around it. Uh, the Layman Library in North Little Rock has a free comic book day event, and Sheila and I dropped off over there uh, to bring a couple of books to some friends, uh, Zebulon and Nicole Holland, that are over there running a booth. And there was all kinds of stuff going on at uh, at the Layman Library. So there's a lot of events going around free comic book day. Just want to make sure people know about that. Carl, did y'all get to do anything today for Free Comic Book Day? Actually, uh, my family, we took our kids over to uh, I Like Comics in Vancouver, Washington, which was packed. Yep. Uh, we, a couple of free comics. We wanted to do some shopping, but it was there was such a long line right. that uh, so we go back after I talk to you guys. Oh, check it out. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, a lot of times like you'll get some cosplay and stuff. My son got to see Iron Man today, and I got a picture of that, and he loved him. I'll tell you what, here's sweet. This will touch your heart. There's a woman dressed up at it's it's either Supergirl or Superwoman. I said Superwoman, maybe it was Supergirl. Anyway, great costume, and this little girl ran up like a little five year old girl because they have a DC girl power yeah. uh, free comic book day and ran up with that and asked her if she could get her autograph. That's sweet. Yeah, that'll touch your heart right there. So anyway, all right. Well, enough about free comic book day because we want to do the new segment and talk about. Uh, Carl Kiesel's work and the Kickstarter doesn't exist, which would be named Section Zero if it does exist, but it doesn't. Yeah. Right. So, okay. I'm going to throw out uh, some quick love for a sponsor. We'll do the new segment and we will push on. Little Rock Comic Con, Arkansas's original comic and toy convention, 2017 Little Rock Comic Con is May 20th. That's coming up, 20th and 21st in Benton, Arkansas. Look for Little Rock Comic Con on Facebook or visit lrcomiccon.com. Admission is $10 a day or 15 for the weekend. Tickets can be purchased through Eventbrite until May 18th or at the door. 2017 special guests include Jason Font of Power Rangers Time Force, Gary Chalk, the voice of Optimus Primal from Beast Wars, Justin Nimmo of Power Rangers in Space, comics artist Timothy Lynn, YouTube personality, personality Optobotamus, and more. And I was talking to Mike Tennell, the guy that rounds everything up over there, and there's also a Walking Dead actor who has uh, come in. Uh, he was one of the. Remember when they were at the prison, Bill? Mm-hmm. You watch what? Yeah, yeah, he was one of the. He was one of the prisoners oh, that okay. was. Yeah. So, uh, so he's going to be there. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I need to write that down. So come on out, and meet special guests, enjoy moderated panels, cosplay and cosplay contests, dealer booths, and lots of cool comics, toys, and geek culture fun. Don't forget the after party at Dave and Buster, seven p.m. Saturday night. After party events tickets must be purchased in advance through Eventbrite by May eighteenth. And remember, for the Comic Con itself. You have to get your tickets through Eventbrite ahead of time by May 18th 
18th, or you can buy them at the door. Dealers and Artist Tables are available now. 2017 Little Rock Comic Con, May 20th and 21st in Benton, Arkansas. Okay. Hey, uh, Zach, turn on the microphone in the super secret newsroom. There they go. Can you believe they're still working on Saturdays, Bill? Yeah, that, that, it's like you got a billion monkeys in there. Talking yeah, they're about, just yeah. typing away. And remember, folks, for every dollar of Patreon support the show gets, the news team gets a penny an hour raise. Yes. It's a win-win for everybody. More bananas. Yeah, more bananas. It's a win-win for everybody. So, of course, the main news item, or one of the main, is, of course, it is Free Comic Book Day. Uh, you can go to freecomicbookday.com and find a retailer near you. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great opportunity to either get back into comics or discover. I, what I do with Free Comic Book Day, I try to get comics that I've, I'm like, I've, I've never read this before. I want to check this out, right? Now, the... Big publishers will a lot of times put out stuff that ties in with a big event or so, and then that's fine. But I, I like I got what did I get? I got like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which I haven't read in forever. I got I got Dragon Ball Super, mm-hmm. and 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 there's a an, an IDW comic with four doctors, the yeah. four doctors. So I just thought that was fun to check out. And they have like 2000 AD special, and they they had all kinds of other really cool stuff. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, DC's got a Wonder Woman tie-in for yeah. the movie, and yeah. Marvel's got a Guardians of the Galaxy tie-in right. for the movie, right? Uh, which has a Defenders backup featuring yep. the four characters that are going to be on the next right. Yeah, I saw TV that. series. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, I got my daughter, they have a Riverdale comic. Yeah, I saw Riverdale. Uh, tied in with the TV the, show. The, the Dark Archie, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what did, 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 uh, what did was there any titles that grabbed your attention there, Carl? Well, uh, my son, my son grabbed the, the turtles. He grabbed yeah. the Ninja Turtles, and uh, my daughter grabbed the um, uh, DC superhero girl. Yeah, These are the ones that they grabbed. Yeah. So, so that's that's you know, and, and like I said, the place was very packed. I I kind of saw some of the ones you were just mentioning, but yeah. you were mentioning myself. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, uh, next news item. I also want to say I've got a special podcast up, and Bill, you were a part of this. Um, well, a couple of weeks ago, Dave Ellswick, who's right here on 96.5 FM, The Answer, Monday through Friday, 2 to 6 p.m., uh, local, I mean, he's been in local talk radio around here forever. He's a mentor of mine. Love Dave. He had uh, myself, um, Mitch Breitweiser, who's a comics artist. Uh, say that again, Carl? Great. He and I worked on a project together. Yeah, in fact, Mitch, uh, Mitch lives locally here, Carl, and he's over at one of the comic book shops today giving out free sketches for uh, uh, free comic book day. So Mitch is a super nice guy. Yeah, but Mitch was on, and then uh, Josh Heffy Huffington was on, who's a local Uber geek. And then, Bill, you were on by phone for several minutes, yeah. and we talked about all the weird stuff that's going on with Marvel Comics right now. So, um, And, and we, got, we got Mitch's perspective, because he's recently, in the past few years, worked with Marvel. So if people want to listen to that, then go to the show notes and find a link to that. I'm not going to go. We've already gone into yeah. it ad infinitum. Uh, today's a fun day. So uh, next news item. And this this shocking, absolutely no one, Guardians of the Galaxy has hauled in 17 million just from the Thursday previews, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. It's projected, I think, to do 140 million this weekend, uh, and that's courtesy box office mojo. So, and just to put those numbers into perspective, uh, let's see here. Da-da-da-da. Yeah, Iron Man 2, um, that's a head of the opening Thursday or whatever for uh, Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3, but not ahead of, let me see what the other the other notes are here. Um, to make sure, I read, I read all this stuff right before the show, so I wouldn't forget. And then, of course, I didn't, you know, I completely blanked. And it's slightly ahead of Beauty and the Beast, which ended up doing uh, 147.1 million, I think that. No, it made, let's see, 174 million its opening weekend. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we'll see. It's doing well. In other words, and I think I think Zach told me we have a celebrity guest caller. Do we, do we have that that caller on the line, Zach? Oh, yeah. Oh man, there that's rocket. Wow, he called in just to say that. Wow, there's Rocky Raccoon okay. calling in to tell he's a man well, of few words. Everybody wants to be on chain play. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that was Rocket Raccoon calling in to tell us what he. Did Rocket, are you still there? I didn't quite catch what you said. Can, can you say that again? Oh, yeah. There you go. So there's Rocket Raccoon's thoughts on it. So I don't know. Carl, are you going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy? Did you like the first one? 
I love the first one. Uh, we have very small children, so we don't see a lot of movies in the theater right now. Right. Um, I don't know. I mean, have, have you, either of you seen it yet? Bill has seen it. Saw it last night. Uh, not appropriate for small children. <laughs> yeah. That's my question. Not appropriate for Yeah. I think instead maybe this weekend we'll, we'll uh, I'm thinking of showing the kids Star Wars, the first Star Wars, the, you know, the new hope. Raising Star them Wars. right. Which is appropriate since mm-hmm. May 4th was, of course, Star Wars Day. Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. So that's a great, that's a great thing to do this weekend. So, um, all right. And final news item. This is from Newsarama. April to April, okay? So this is comparing last April to this April, right? Evidently, comic book sales are down 13%, which kind of blows my mind, yeah. but but there it is. So um, I wonder, Bill, and Carl, I, you know, if you still pay attention to the to the nuts and bolts of the industry, I know that, I know that yourself, uh, or, you know, you're doing the, the independent thing with, with Section Zero, but if you're still kind of tied into Marvel and DC, I'd love your perspective on this as well. Uh, you know, I wonder, does this 13% down have anything to do with, because Marvel's in a slump, and they've always been the biggest seller, right? Now, DC is on, is on a rise, so I wonder if DC hadn't been on a rise recently, if this would have actually been worse. I wonder if this is mainly because Marvel's tanking. I don't know. Yeah. Do you have any and you don't have to speak to this if you if you don't want to, Carl. I don't even know if you like talking about this stuff or not. You know the numbers of it, but do you have any perspective you'd like to share on it? I got any insight? Uh, actually, as you were talking about, it, I was just wondering: are sales down print wise, but but web comics sales are up? I'm just wondering if the readership is migrating. I don't know. Yeah, there's. I've researched that a few times and. Digital is still a very small percentage. It's growing, but I don't think it's enough to account for a 13%, you know, drop um in, in things. Now, here's another thing that you have to um do you have to take into account when they share these numbers. Because what the, they said for April, um you know, Marvel Comics was number one with Secret Empire number zero. But the de- the deceptive thing on, on that is that that's what the retailers order. That yeah. actually doesn't show you what sold through. Yeah, what they actually sold. Yeah, what they actually customers. sold. And another th- interesting thing, cause, because Marvel keeps saying, well, we're making the most money, they're charging on average a dollar more per issue. Yeah. So, right. yeah, there was one month where they came out on top because they had a, you ready for this one? $10 Spider-Man comic. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my yeah. my commentary on the whole thing. Is I, I mean, I don't buy monthly comics anymore and haven't in a long time. Right. And the main reason for that is that they are they're expensive. Right. Uh, I mean, you used to you could go down to the store with ten bucks in your pocket and come back with a pile of comics. Right. And now that's about what two, three. Right. Maybe. Yeah. It's it's crazy. They're crazy expensive. They're they're way more expensive than inflation should account they're, for. They're way more expensive and they're smaller. Yeah, but on the good news front, Carl Kiesel has a great deal with us or for us with with Section Zero, the Kickstarter that doesn't exist. Indeed, you can get you can get more bang for your buck with with the the Kickstarter that doesn't exist. Anyway, that's just a uh, so you know, and you have to take these numbers. With a grain of salt, because we say it was down thirteen percent. What does that mean? Does that mean graphic novels were down thirteen percent too? Does that mean that you know? Well, what what does that really mean? But there is there is a bit of a of a decrease, no matter how yeah. you slice it. And I can't help oh. but wonder if 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 some of that's if a lot of that's because Marvel's slumping. Anyway, go ahead, Carl. You were going to say something. You just brought up the whole graphic novel thing. That so when you say sales are down, is that just the monthly sales, the floppy? That you, doesn't account. Because, I mean, I think more and more people are, like like um, Bill is, buying just a collection. Right. Uh, it appears that there are numbers in this article, and it's linked on shameplays.com on the show notes if people want to go a little bit deeper. But it, it does appear uh, it's direct market comic book sales. So I would take that to mean the individual issues or, or, yeah. or what's down. Yeah. Uh, I know. Well, no, wait a minute. Uh, no, no, here we go. This is See, this is why this stuff is deceptive. Year-to-date, sales are down 2.53% in comic book dollar sales and 12.41% in graphic novels. 
So the actual okay. single issue stuff mm-hmm. isn't down that that much. Yeah. See, that's why you got to be careful with these headlines. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, okay. Now that we've completely mangled that news item, let's yes. <laughs> shoot it in the head and put it out of its misery. Completely disregard the last five minutes of the show, folks. Uh, and and move, all is fine. All is fine. Comic books are fine. Remain calm. Yeah, remain calm. But Marvel isn't a slump. Yes. Marvel's, for the first time in years, is taking it on the chin compared to DC. So, all right. Uh, having had that incredibly amazing news segment, I would like to formally introduce Mr. Carl Kiesel to our listeners uh, and then we could talk a little bit about what you do and, and, and your Section Zero comic book and everything, um, or your uh, Kickstarter, which is for a comic book. But comics inker and writer Carl Kiesel has a long history since the mid-'80s, including work with DC, Marvel, and Dark Horse. Now, Carl, was, was your main work with Dark Horse, was that the Aliens, or did you do other stuff with them as well? I did. Actually, uh, I did two Indiana Jones miniseries for them. Okay. I- and wrote another one. Um, what else? Yeah, and I did do a little bit of Aliens. Oh, Terminator. I did a, a Terminator with Paul Glacier. Nice. Very nice. Uh, notable works include, in addition to those, of course, Suicide Squad. Now, you were inker on Suicide Squad, correct? Uh, that was that was a dream job. I loved working on that book. I yeah. Mean, yeah, I remember. I, I, Go ahead. I like to say I was the book's first fan because I was thinking Legends, the miniseries Suicide Squad was introduced in. Right. So I was reading those pages before anyone else, and I was like going, the Suicide Squad is a really great idea. Yeah. And, I mean, I campaigned to ink the regular monthly book because I just loved the idea so much. It was one of those ideas I thought, why has no one done this before? Right. It, it was a great idea. Now, if I'm remembering right from, Le- I remember buying Legends as it came out. Yeah. Was the Suicide Squad, didn't they send them after Brimstone? What was their first mission? Was it Brimstone? The big lumbering, awful, fiery thing? Yeah, in, exactly. In, in the Legends book. Yeah. yeah. And that was, Legends also introduced the post crisis Wonder Woman. She shows up on the scene. Yeah. But, I mean, we already know who Wonder Woman is, but the Suicide Squad is a, is a brand new brand new thing so right. yeah so legends was great legends was the first big event following crisis on infinite earth if i remember right was well, the second big crossover from dc right? yeah so all right and it was was it gilbert godfrey no uh, <laughs> not gilbert glorious, godfrey glorious Gee, godfrey yeah, yeah glorious the, godfrey the, the guy, no not gilbert godfrey <laughs> <laughs> and he was Although, manipulating everybody's emotions right yeah yeah all right uh gilbert he would have been interesting. Gilbert would have been very interesting in their role. Yeah, he very, very much. So, Suicide Squad, Reign of the Superman. Right. Uh, not to mention that you and I can't. I'm 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 drawing a blank. You were the co-creator of the uh, the Reign of the Superman Superboy that came out of that. I'm Gromit. Yeah, that was yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, and then of course you kind of uh, you were uh, part of the team that re kind of redid hawk and dove so it was a it was a a man and woman team instead of two brothers yelling at each other yeah Yeah. and and that was good stuff and of course you wrote final night Uh, and i think was was it Stuart iman iman in the iman in that did the the art on that is there any other projects or series you want to make sure to mention in there carl um well you know i i will say uh a, a project i did that's really close to my heart was i did a Captain America, the lost 1940s newspaper comic strip. Oh. And, and I it penciled it and inked it. It's the only thing I've done all of. And uh, it was a three-issue miniseries. I first did it online at Marvel, then collected it as three issues, and then did collect it as a trade paperback. But I structured it and drew it as if it was a daily and Sunday comic strip. Oh, neat. And it was based on the 40s Captain America. Oh, you know, I mean, he had the forties costume. Did he, he have the fun. triangular shield, or did he have? Did he have the round shield by that point? Round shield. He did have the round. Shield. Okay. Well, what? now the triangular shield only lasted one issue, right? It didn't last very long. The triangular one, or that one that looked like a badge. I don't know. Yeah. So it looked no. like he worked for Chevron. Right. So, exactly. You know. <laughs> yeah. And it had like a green stripe down the middle for some inexplicable reason. So okay. Anyway. All right. Well, that that is, uh, and you've been working in comics since the. What early eighties was it? But what, what, did you start before then? Or eighty four was the first year I actually supported myself as a cartoonist. 
exciting. And now, have you? Is that what you have done from thou then till now? Is that still how you, you like your main thing? That's my main thing. I, I I've done some commercial jobs, and all all I keep learning when I do commercial artwork is how much I hate doing commercial artwork. <laughs> <laughs> it pays the bills. I know. I like. I love Shane plays with a deep and abiding passion. My day job. Now I gotta admit, my current day job I enjoy, but it's not my passion. But it's 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 one of the better jobs I've had. But I had a job before that that I hated, with the white hot passion of a thousand suns. But it, it brought money in. So what can you do? It kept it kept it kept the family with a roof over their head. So what we're gonna do, Carl? We're gonna take a break. When we come back, I want to talk about section zero. Does that sound good to you? Okay. okay, so there is no section there is no, zero. I was fixing to say, disclaimer, there is no section zero. But if there were, Bill, if yeah. there were, then... If there were, that's what we would talk about. That's now. what... We're, he's going to tell us what it would be like if there was one. So, is that... Are there... Do you see guys down in the parking lot with, with black suits on and sunglasses? Is that... Uh, I don't know. They look kind of, they look kind of yeah, upset. Kind They're of looking up character. at it. Yeah, it doesn't exist, guys. Don't come after us. We're cool. We're not talking about it. But if we if we, we're not going to talk about it because it doesn't exist, we're going to talk about what it would be like if it did exist, which it doesn't. So, all right, when we come back, ninety six five FM, the answer. Shane plays Geek Talk Radio. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone, this is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game Game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of Castles and Crusades today. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash Shane Plays. Hey, we're back. Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey. And the things we love, uh, we are joined by comic book professional and veteran Carl Kiesel. Also a friend of the show, William Brakeen. Bill Brakeen is in the show. Zach, say hi, man. You haven't said hi on the air. Good yet. afternoon. And you're going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy tonight, right? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for letting us borrow La La Land. We enjoyed it. Zach keeps me in movies because I'm kind of like Carl. We've got a younger kid and it's, it's hard to get out a lot. So Zach keeps us in movies. He brings us all the new movies. So thanks again for that, buddy. Uh, joined by Carl Kiesel. Uh, and we're talking to, if it existed, which it doesn't, we'll be talking about his Kickstarter for Section mm-hmm. Zero. Uh, Carl, thanks again for, for joining us. Pleasure. Yeah, and we've got folks, remember this is Live Talk Radio. You can call 501-823-0965, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. Don't forget the uh, the show notes are up at shaneplays.com right now. Carl, I definitely 100% want to talk about the Kickstarter that doesn't exist, Section Zero, but I got to ask a little bit. What, uh, how, you know, how long did it take you, and I think it was Tom Grummet, uh, 
to come up with and get approved for your design of the new Superboy that came out of Reign of the Supermen? Well, I don't think I don't think it took long at all for for an approval. I mean, we were at the Superman Summit, uh, and it was decided to have four different Supermen. And while we were there, Tom sketched up a, uh, the look that, as far as I remember, was pretty much the look that Superboy had. Yeah. And uh, Mike Carlin made one suggestion. Mike Carlin, the editor, told Tom to give Superboy the Superman spit curl because uh, Tom had given him more uh, spikier hair, which later on he got. But right. Uh, that was the only editorial guidance uh, we were given on the look of the character. Um, and, I mean, really, it was very smooth sailing. It, it happened almost, like, Just right. Well, you know, a, you know, a lot of people, you know, say, oh, the, the Death of Superman stuff was, you know, just kind of a stunt or whatever. But the reign of Superman that came out of it was really interesting stuff. There were some really good stories that came out of that. Um, and I remember, like, I'm... I remember... Like I'm reading it now, like I have it in my hand for the first time when your version of Superboy went into the destruction of Coast City with uh, Cyborg Superman with the little headset on. It was a reporting and then Cyborg Superman turned on him and shot him through the gut or no, he did. He shot the Eradicator through the gut yeah. and then and then was kind of turning on Superboy or whatever. I mean, I remember that stuff. There were some really good storylines that came out of there and I always enjoyed your version of Superboy. I thought he was cool. So um yeah yeah so how why because he had like tactile telekinesis he didn't have super strength per se he had like tactile telekinesis and some other stuff and then now was it your decision as uh, at that time i don't know if you were a writer or what but uh did was it your decision who who was like ah let's send him to hawaii a super boy or you know hawaii needs a superhero that uh that was uh mine and tom's decision yeah we were just trying how to uh, give him a little bit of a unique feel and, and a different... We wanted to get him out of Metropolis so he could be on his own, because if he was going to be in Metropolis, he'd just be in the shadow of Superman all the time. Right. And tried to figure out... And the thing about Superboy that we kept coming back to is we saw him as, a, as very much a wish-fulfillment character. So he, he was doing the things that we thought at least the readers would like to do if they could. Right. And so how would the readers like to live? Hawaii. Right. Well, who didn't want to go to Hawaii? Yeah, well, he had like an agent. I mean, he was trying, he was living kind of a superstar lifestyle a little bit because mm-hmm. wasn't one of the main characters. Uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she was almost like his agent or his handler or something like that. I'm a, am I remembering that right? A, a guy named uh, Rex Leach and his daughter Roxy. Rex that was it, Roxy. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, anyway, and I always thought it was cool. That he had his costume, but then he'd wear wear he'd wear a leather jacket and sunglasses over the top of it. I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, uh, all Tom Grummet right there. Yeah, that was all him. Well, I liked it. So there was there was some really interesting stuff that came out, and I loved. And I know you didn't do Steel, but I thought there was I thought Steel was a really good character that came out of Reign of the Superman. I, th- I thought there was some really good stuff going on there. So yeah, um, I think Superman books uh, right then were just firing on all cylinders, and, and I was lucky enough to fall into it. Um, and I will say that I think everyone there made everyone else do better work. I mean, yeah. we were just feeding off each other. We were feeding off each other. Well, that is cool. So, I mean, I, I think it's neat. you got to do some good work. I mean, you've worked on, just looking through your bibliography, I was like, man, I have really read and bought a lot of Carl's work. So, yeah. again, it's a pleasure to be talking with you. Um, Bill, oh, you're welcome. Bill, do you have any questions about his non-Section Zero work before we move into Section Zero? Well, I, I don't really have a question so much as I would like to, to take an opportunity to personally thank Carl for the final night. Yeah, that's uh, good stuff. I, I'm, I'm a huge Hal Jordan Green Lantern fan. Uh, I was very uh, unhappy with the way the character had been treated uh, going into that and that was the first step in the character in reclaiming the character in my mind and uh, i thought it was extremely well done and uh and every little bit of it was just perfect well well, thank you thank you very much i mean i know once we had the idea for the final night i i really can't remember how we decided to to fold green lantern or parallax as he was called at the time i can't remember how we decided to fold it in but 
it, it just seemed inevitable at that point. Uh, and, and I always said, you know, you, you got to give this guy a hero send off. You got to give this guy. The, a hero right. Send-off. Yeah. He had, there was no closure whatsoever. And I don't want to make this about green lantern, but I, at the same time, the same time that the Superboy and all that was coming out. I remember buying the issues where suddenly Hal Jordan goes crazy and starts killing all the other Green Lanterns, and I'm like, "This is this is crazy." There's no closure here for the for the yeah. fans that that like the character. But anyway, uh, yeah, I'll second that. Uh, I thought Final Night was was done really really well. Um, you know, it wasn't just a big, you know, let's have all the heroes and villains get together and bash on each other. There was some really interesting stuff going on there thematically, so I thought it was really good. All right. If, Thank you. You're welcome. If if Section Zero existed, Carl, what would it be about? Well, if, yeah. yeah but if. There is no Section Zero. There is none. Uh, I, I, I'll try not to make it sound like I've memorized this, but I have. <laughs> um, it, is, it is not a secret section of the United Nations Charter. It does not perpetually fund a team of experts and explorers to uh, investigate the strange and unknown. It does not look into things like UFOs, monsters, lost civilizations, and things like that, because none of these things exist. None. Not none. No. No, none. They don't exist. So, but if they existed, what kind of adventures would they have with them? Well, you know, they would travel the world. They would see strange sights. They would run into uh, dinosaurs that didn't become exist or are not extinct. They would... Uh, I. I uh, there's a lot of um, folklore that I that I enjoy a lot that makes it into the book. Um, you know, uh, the Loch Ness monster. Uh, in the second half, assuming we get to do it, there will be um, changelings and, and things called selkies, which are women who can change the seals. Um, I, I find that all really fascinating and, and very and used very little in comics. So I think it's a really fresh area to explore. Right. Definitely not used a lot in mainstream comics. A lot of your more independent stuff, you might find stories like that. But yeah, your mainstream stuff, which I'm speaking of DC and Marvel, even though you think about it, man, if Dark Horse has been out 30 years now and Image has been out 25. So I guess they're mainstream now, even though I have a hard time yep. in my brain making that. Now, the history of this book, it was actually first, it first came out in the early 2000s under right. Gorilla Comics, which through new, no fault of your own, Gorilla Comics ended up having some financial problems or something. So the, so the but, books didn't continue. Is that correct? And I think, uh, yeah, we, there were some plans for financial backing that never quite happened, unfortunately. But, um, but personally speaking, that really did not affect Section Zero. I just went through a rough period of my life, and I could no longer continue working on it. Okay. Uh, All right. So it just so happened that the, those were kind of at the same time because I know the, I know the other books had to go away because there was no financial backing, if I understand right. Because you had some pretty big names in, in with that Gorilla Comics. There was yourself. I think wasn't Mark Wade involved and yeah. in, in some other names. So Kurt Busick, yeah, and um, Busick. I mean, you know, these guys. You know, I was really propping them up at the, at that point, but um. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, that's classic. Um, well, so um, anyway, it sounds like it, you know, it's in an alternate universe. It sounds like Gorilla Comics could have been really great. So sorry that that didn't move forward. Now, Bill tells me uh, that he bought all your Section Zero comics then and really liked it a lot and is super happy about this Kickstarter. Yeah, so well, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I've told people who have asked me about it because I've, I've promoted, uh, I've been promoting the, the rebirth of it on Facebook, uh, somewhat people ask me, well, well, what is it? And I, I tell them, well, it's kind of, uh, I would call it like a, like the, the X files meets the fantastic four exactly, you know, yeah. in, in some, in some respects, I kind of, my vibe I got on it was kind of the X files meets the challengers of the unknown, yeah. but, but the, the fantastic <laughs> four in some way mm-hmm. are kind of modeled on the challengers of the unknown yeah, from what I've heard. So I don't know. Well, they're both Kirby creations, yeah. and you can. And when you look at the at, at the artwork, I mean, Grummet has kind of it really captured a lot of the way Kirby lays things out, and it it has a very Kirby vibe to it, right? Yeah. So, and I want to I want to tell people that if 
if you're listening live, we have a lot of people listening by podcast, but if you happen to be listening live, if you back the Kickstarter today on a free comic book day, there's a special reward for that. Do you want to tell people about that, Carl? Uh, um, the deal is uh, we, we will give you a free comic just like everyone else. Everyone that backs the Kickstarter today, May 6th, by the end of today, will get a download link for uh, what was the first issue of, of Section Zero when it came out in 2000. Um, that was a 24-page story. And, uh, and in, in addition to that, I'm going to throw in some of the character sketches for the new characters that would appear in the second half of the story. Okay. And we will even, even include the first page of the second half of the new story. So... That will all be included in the free download for anyone who pledges to the Kickstarter today. Today, which is May 6th, 2017. So, that, you know, if you happen to be listening by podcast, or, I mean, there's still a lot of great stuff here in this Kickstarter. Um, yes, the, the reward levels are awesome. Yeah, well, let's go over it. So, so what it, the, the Kickstarter is for, uh, there, it's not just, I mean, it's, it's like a collection here. Let's tell people what they get. Um, you get well, the. Um, <coughs> go ahead. Reproduce, reprint the first three issues that was the image uh, published back in 2000. Uh, Tom and I actually tried to revive this online in 2012, and we produced 12 more pages, 12 new pages. That would also be included in this book. Okay. And then Tom and I actually wrote and drew a six page uh, story, uh, interlude story featuring one of the characters. Which I'm, it was it was for a charity in Canada. I'm not sure if that, it actually ever got printed, but that would be included. Okay. And then we have we need about sixty more pages of new material to finish off this first story. And really, that's what the Kickstarter is for: is to help us pay our bills while we finish off these last sixty pages. And uh, and then of course, in addition to that, we've got uh, you know we would include. Uh, sketches and background material for how the stories and characters came together. We've got 10 pinups by 10 amazing artists. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. Uh, I'm actually going to read that out real quick, if you don't mind. So the uh, the pinups, uh, you get 10 pinup Section Zero characters by Walt Simonson, Ben Caldwell, Matthew Clark, Terry Dodson, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, John Pollyon, Kelly Jones, Jerry Ordway, Chris Samney, and Dave Gibbons. Those are some pretty big <laughs> names there, yes. man. Good grief. Oh, I, I, was, I was stunned when they, they said yes. You know, I, I approached them all very sheepishly, and uh, every single one of them didn't hesitate. I, I'll never be able to thank them enough. All right. And, and you know, people can get in on this Kickstarter. Uh, uh, you know, they can pledge a dollar or more, you know, for thanks, which every mm-hmm. Kickstarter has that, and some people will just do that. Uh, but starting at ten dollars and up, you can actually get a readable version. Now, ten dollars will get you a PDF of everything, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and then it just goes up and up, and it just keeps adding, you know, really cool, um, um, you know, yeah. reward I, levels. Go I, ahead, Bill. I have backed the book at the twenty-five hour bug level. Okay, which uh, I will for that backers receive a printed copy of the trade paperback book plus all the lower reward levels which means i also get the tesla level reward which means that my name will be in the book added to the list of alleged second section zero supporters alleged 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 because this doesn't exist and i also have carl's undying thanks for all time so i got that going for me yeah man there's stuff in here there's a level where you can get original art from superboy one million page 15 Mm mm-hmm that's still not, available. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, that's still available. We have we have some other Superboy pages in, in you know in our back pocket. Uh, should this one disappear? I I think I think we should answer the super secret question on air right now. I know what my answer is. Okay, yeah. I like Connor Kent just fine, but but Carl Superboy versus Connor Kent. Come on, who would win? Carl's. Come on now. Well, I, I, nice and everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Now, now. We, listen, honestly, I don't know uh, anything about the. You're talking about the son of Superman that's in the rebirth. No, that's actually uh, John Kent, who is. Okay. Uh, he. Uh, that's actually Superman's literal son with Lois Lane. Mm-hmm. Connor Kent was a clone, uh, like, uh, 
li- like uh, the Superboy from Reign of Superman, but he was more of a direct clone, whereas oh. Superboy was kind of had like different powers and stuff like that. So, is this uh, the um, the New Fifty Two Superboy? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think he was New Fifty Two slash Young. Ju- he was the one in Young Justice, the the TV series. I think they brought him over from Young Justice into the comic books, if I'm not mistaken. So. Yeah, I know nothing about that. He's the dark brooding character. Yeah, yeah he's kind of angry. Kind of Yeah. Because Superman won't have anything to do with him. But anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Section Zero. Which there, is no section there is zero. no Section Zero. There is no Section Zero. All right. I want to talk a little bit more. Uh, we're going to take another break, pay the bills. When we come back, I want to talk more about what people can expect story-wise uh, with these characters. And, 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 you know, like, why is it... Not it's just cool because we're talking to Carl and hey it's but why is it cool why is it cool and you know why did Bill like it so much when it came out when it was under Gorilla Comics when we come back right here oh actually I got those some Zach don't take it I got throw some love to Game Goblins then we'll go to a break all right all right hey Zach your life depends on this answer does Section Zero exist yes it does what no Ugh. Zach, the men in black are going to come up. No, man, your life depends on this, Zach. It doesn't exist. But if it did, the people should go support the Kickstarter. All right. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. And I'm pretty sure they're doing a Hero Clicks thing over there for free comic book day. So you might want to go check that out. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. That's 501-224-GAME or GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, Game Goblins has expanded their store size, and there's plenty of room for exciting inventory and tables for play space. You'll like that space because Game Goblins has gaming events every day of the week. For all of your gaming needs, I heartily recommend Game Goblins. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. Game Goblins earns your business and keeps it. First-time customers mention Shane Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Tell them Shane Plays sent you. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone, this is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as the Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk radio a journey into the things we love i'm your host shane stacks uh Joined by Carl Kiesel, 
who is a comic book professional and veteran of the industry. And we're talking about his series along that he's working on with Tom Grummet called Section Zero, which doesn't exist. But but if it did exist, this is what it would be like. And also joined by friend of the show and fan of this comic book, uh, Bill Brackeen. So thanks so much uh, for joining us. If, if you're just if you happen to be joining us, uh, you know, after the break, uh, you can call in if you'd like at 518-230-965. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays if you have a question or a comment for Carl or anything else. So, Bill, uh, tell us, like as a fan, somebody here read this back in the 2000s, early 2000s. And now it's why I mean, why what is it about the book that you like? Like, you know, OK, well, in conjunction, not just with Section Zero, but with a lot of Carl's work in general, uh, as opposed to a lot of the comics of now and, and of the day at the time, Section Zero was fun, fun. It was what? fun I mean, in comics. There, I mean, it had the whole espionage uh, secret agent uh panache to it but it was also uh just a lot of i mean there's things like they're capturing the jersey devil and right and and things of that nature and one of the members of the team is is a is a gray alien called tesla right and uh that it's it's just high adventure it's like you know right. it's you know I, I mean i said it was uh, x files meets fantastic four it's also kind of x files meets indiana jones right which is cool and now are there any uh, I mean, I understand they're going to, but are there any villains? Because I'm looking at some artwork or some pages on the Kickstarter page, and it almost seems like there's a group of people that are unhappy that they're back or that they're even around at all. Is there so? Is there a supervillain element or like a a rival team element? Maybe uh, there is another organization uh, that is sort of shadow, even more shadowy than Section Zero around the periphery. Who is and they're. Uh, if if memory call recall, if memory serves they are uh it's their intentions are unknown okay so they point. may or may not be bad guys yeah okay so carl what is it about this comic that what 15 years later not to mention you, you there was uh, a revival online in 2012 what is it about this that's so near to your heart that that you're you know you're making a run at this again well, I mean, it, it combines everything I love about comics. It, uh, it, I would like to think it captures some of the energy that Kirby brought to comics because he's a big influence on me. Um, I think it captures or tries to capture some of the personal dynamics that I really enjoyed in Milton Kniff's work on Tyrion the Pirates and Steve Canyon. He's probably my very biggest comic book or t- cartoonist idol ever. Okay. And, uh, and I'm also a huge fan of, um, you know, The Strange and Unknown. I read... Uh, books by Lauren Coleman or John Keel, who did the Mothman Prophecies. And uh, there's just a lot of weird stuff out there, man. There really is. <laughs> <laughs> there really is. Well, that's cool. I like, I mean, I love that, you know, one thing that Bill touched on that I think we need more of, and I think DC's making a good attempt to, let's lighten things up a little bit. It Things have gotten so dark and grim and serious, and comics have taken themselves so seriously for so long now there's nothing wrong with good strong serious storytelling in comics but not everything has to be you know the deep dark you know whatever and and i i've got it i got to salute dc with rebirth they've really made a hard effort to get back to the stuff that people remember that they love about comics you know yeah. so um uh, well we're coming up i've got uh about a minute left for you, Carl. Okay. Tell it, and it's, sorry, radio always goes so quick. Uh, you know, tell it, is there anything else you want to tell us about, you know, Section Zero that you haven't had a chance to mention that, that that's important for you? Um, well, only that, you know, the only reason we can kind of figure out a way to bring this back is because it, it means the world to us. It, it is really the book Tom and I have always wanted to do. And we really, you know, we want to find a way to do it. We want, we want to find a way to get it out there. We want we want to share the passion we feel for it with other people out there. And okay. that's what the is all about. All right. Well, I mean, it seems like your Kickstarter is doing well, so I, I certainly hope that it is successful for you. Bill, real quick, you got any final thoughts or, you know, 
there is no section <laughs> there is the, but there but if there was go support it on yes. kickstarter yes, the link is on shameplays.com and just search for section zero kickstarter and you'll find it guys i hate to do this to you in fact you can think of it as a super zero a super secret psych evaluation for section zero if it existed to see how you react to pressure and pain but we have the bad joke of the week every week so i have to do this now all right what did what what did one ocean say to the other ocean Oh, I know. See you later. Nope. Nothing. It just waved. Nothing. It just, they just waved. All right. We will catch you next time on Shame Plays Geek Talk Radio. Carl, thanks so much for calling in and best of luck with your Kickstarter. Free Comic Book Day is always the first Saturday in May. Free Comic Book Day is Christmas for comic book fans. What makes it successful is that you have a bunch of stores getting together and kind of getting some nationwide coverage for this one day of the year where they promote the art form that is comics. Happy Free Comic Book Day. Thanks. It's a great way to get kids introduced to comics. And a big part of that is getting kids to read. We have many, many customers who have started reading through comic books. Who, who introduced you to comic so books? Have a great day. Daddy. My daughter reads comics with me so we know it's free comic day so we came in for more free comics it's really fun it helps us read together helps helps her learn how to read she loves all the sound effects in there the, the characters are fun um, what do you like about comic books shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to patreon.com slash shameplays.